I made the vaguely impulsive decision to republish my book, but as like a special edition hardbacks, I think that would be fun. I had this idea because I wanted to write a sequel, and that sounds like a very bad reason to republish a book, but I also want to go back and rewrite things, and let me explain that a little bit more. When I was first writing this book, it was the only thing I could think of for five years straight. I knew I wanted to write a trilogy, I just had no idea what would be in those books because this took over so much of my brain space I physically could not think of anything else until the day I finished a book, I published it, and then my brain finally cleared and I had the brain power to start thinking about what the sequel would actually be about. And I got to the point where I wrote a rough draft outline for the sequel and I realised that oh there's some things that I want to discuss in that book that I mentioned in this one that need to go back and clarify. So I sat down, I thought, you know, I'm gonna go back and rewrite this book. Not like completely change the plot or anything. The plot's the thing I left alone. So I wanna go back line by line. First of all, to get rid of a handful of typos that I have managed to keep slipping through my notice. Also get a proofreader to get rid of those typos for me and any other errors. And to go back and change these very tiny details, which are like a word or two changes and there's a couple where I wanted to add an extra paragraph to see the scenes like more description, more detail, more context. So if you reread the book, you probably won't notice anything's changed. Like if you've read this one and you read the new one, you probably won't notice any changes. But I wanted to do that so if you read the new version for the first time and go into the sequel, it'll make perfect sense. Not like reading the sequel without reading the new version will not make sense. I don't want to have those little details ironed out just to purely say that oh this is definitely intentional and not just me being vague now that I know what I'm doing. So I'm currently in the process of, I say rewriting, I'm changing maybe a hundred words maximum and most of those words are added. So there's nothing, no plot changes, no, no major changes, like barely any minor changes kind of like thing. I was gonna say it's what like Samantha Chandler's doing right now with the bone season re-edit rewrite but I think she is making some plot structural changes. This book has no structural changes. And I thought you know I'm gonna publish this as, as a lovely hardcover with the dust jacket and all because I feel like fantasies are meant to be hardcovers you know that just makes sense to me. And I wanted to include the short story Paper Ghosts that I wrote which I wrote between finishing Paper Forests and before outlining the next book. So I wanted, little, I wanted to dedicate some words on this short story for a specific character just so I have a better idea of her intentions for the next book. So I wanted to include that short story in the Paper Forest's new hardcover because it picks up literally the second the book ends and it'd be nice just to continue that on. And I wanted new cover artwork because I'm pretty sure that this cover artist, this was a pre-made cover that I bought on Etsy so it's very affordable and I don't think I can afford um, first of all, can't afford a full cover design as much as I would love to. I can't justify that for a re-release of a book that's already out. Second of all, I'm pretty sure I can't find the cover artist anymore. I did know where she was, where she was, where she was on the internet a few months ago, but she seemed to have dropped covers entirely since like five plus years ago when I got this. And I think that's what I want to say for the intro part. Basically. I wanted to make a lovely special edition book, I wanted to make some minor plot changes so the sequel seems very intentional and I wanted to include the short story. I think that's all. As usual my first favourite thing to do when making the book is to do the cover because I really love having a visual just to see what I'm aiming towards because obviously everyone loves covers. For this cover I wanted to commission the art myself and for it to be illustrated and have my characters on it because as I love this cover to bits, I, but it was a pre-made cover on Etsy, so although it is my cover, it was never created for me. And as I am continuing to work on my book making skills, I really want to get into actually making my covers myself. Even if I can't illustrate them or do the art yet, I can make it. But with this, I, I didn't decide it. I loved it and this is everything I could ever want for this book, but like, I can personalise it much, you know. So I went out hunting for an artist and when I was thinking of doing this I already had an artist in mind because it was someone who I wanted to commission their work anyway. I put a little profile here. I find artists by following other writers on Twitter and seeing who they commission their character art from. 
and I saw someone whose style I fell in love with and I thought that is perfect that's the perfect like fantasy art style it's also so swirly and detailed and textured that it reminds me of Van Gogh and I have a little Van Gogh thing going on so I, I, when I, as soon as I saw this artist someone else posted a commission from them I thought that's gonna be mine one day so I commissioned the art and I did that by sliding into the DMs because that was this um, artist preferred approach I sent them I first opened it by saying how would you feel about doing art for a book cover because I know licensing and copyright and payment can be different for those commercial things and they're like yes I would love to send me your ideas so I sent them again I'm gonna slide over to make some space I sent them this movable thing I have an idea for the art in mind already and on TikTok I follow this account who is a figure model and posts pose reference for artists pretty regularly so I saw one that I loved I screenshotted it I put a little credit of this this is inspired by this person I put that in the center of my mood and I thought, okay, here's what my two cats are going to be doing. I went through my book and picked out actual extracts of what they're wearing and what they look like for what's actually canon in the universe. And I said, any other detail, if it's not in here, go wild, do what you want, open to interpretation. I then also made like a very rough, vague, um, I took the template of what the hardcover thing would be look like. I put the rough text in place and I put the character, like a very rough outline I did in the middle just so for the artist just to say like hey here's what it could look like when it's done and that was the commission process so after the art was done it came down to me to actually make the cover design so as usual I find a template for my cover this was I'm using Ingram Spark for publishing this version so I use their cover template generator because every single publishing company has their own different guidelines for the bleed most of the bleed and how wide the flaps are of the book. So I found the Ingram specific one so I could get my dimensions roughly right. I put my art, I framed it up nicely where I wanted it to go. Actually, before I framed up all nicely, I put all of my text roughly in place. So I already knew what font I wanted for the title. It's the it's either the exact same font or very similar font to the one that Emily Lloyd Jones has on the Drowned Woods and the Bonehouses covers. It's called Romana, I believe. I put that in place the sizes i put my author name i knew at the top on the front cover maybe i'd have like a little quote from an author or a reviewer of like you know this book's great that kind of thing and then in the flaps i have the book description the author bio you have very limited freedom on what's like supposed to be on a dust jacket so it's just a case of putting these things in place and then on the back you have a little more freedom it's where on most popular books you would have like the thick list of quotes from authors saying how great the book is like the praise for the book but as i'm a self-published author who has no author friends haven't got that yet so we'll see if what happens when we get to close the publication of what's going on so once all the text in place i put my art in place just so i really visualize it i i wanted the cover to have some kind of symmetry to it like i wanted the background behind like the frosty background to be across the entire cover like a full wraparound image situation so i duplicated the art i flipped it i selected around the characters and i used content aware fill to remove them i don't usually do this but i'm popping in here to clarify that the artist said i can do all these changes to the cover she said here is the art i actually have a dm saying make whatever changes you want to make it a book cover I feel I need to clarify that so it doesn't seem like I'm just changing her art for no reason, but got permission. And then after that, the cover's for now pretty much done. This is a very easy cover making process because again, for dust jackets, you are vaguely limited on composition. And because I wanted the art to be a, a standout point that did most of like, the illustration for me. That's how the cover happens. So at this point, all my edits are usually done. So I can start working on the interior of the book. I say I'll work on the interior because at this point, as I've added all my scenes, taken away scenes and all my little changes, the word count and therefore the page count are pretty much going to stay the same. The only thing left to do is proofreading, which for me should hopefully be just minor typos and nothing else. So I can go ahead, put my manuscripts into the um, book interior documents and my page count should be the same. And then I can go ahead and finalise the cover. I can update metadata, all those fun things with books. For this, I used InDesign like I did on my last book video like this. But now, as I had a practice run with that book, I kind of know what I'm doing and I can do a little more fun things with it. I tried to keep the formatting pretty much the same as Paper Forest. I was like, there's still the same book, just minor changes. Minor changes being that 
these all black pages and the where's one um the background on the like chapter title pages here these have been updated to have the swirly background that the cover has the fonts have obviously all been updated to match the um romana fonts that the cover and all those other things have and then at the top of the pages it will have like author name book title and the start of the chapters will now have a drop capital a drop capital a drop capital as i believe all good fantasy should have and that is pretty much the only thing that i have changed also this little tree design if you can kind of i don't just overexpose what i got there this little tree design has been updated to a different tree design and i'm going to update the maps and the illustrations and those pictures to just be better versions <laughs> different versions but it's still pretty much the same content other than that, that the interior is there's not really a huge amount to say on it it's just an updated version to fit the needs of the current book and also recognizing that they are the same story and the same book i will be also adding the paper ghost short story to the end of this book because why not extra content and as they pick off um paper ghosts picks up right after paper forest it makes sense for them to be right together and then as i release other hard covers in the future i would like to include short stories in those and eventually hopefully just release a full short story collection oh vague other interior things is that the um is this called the app card the list of my books has been updated to include books copyright page will be updated so it's 2023 for this second edition and it will have the isbn's updated on the copyright page if an author will still be there with all the content warnings it will be updated just to include more of the ones that i thought were minor ones but i think will be worth including because this is pretty much just the major ones and other than that I don't think there's anything else to say about the interior so hopefully the next clip in this video will be a proof copy of the book so we have our first proof copy i will go in with like the immediate disclaimer is that i printed this using lulu rather than ingram spark so i find it easier for part other and stuff like that right now so the template that i use for the cover is the ingram spark one not the lulu one so that's why it's like so not central this was basically a proof for the interior and also I think mostly for the idea of the colours of the cover because for my last release which was the Paper Ghost short story the main issue I had with the cover was the colours and how different it looks from my screen to page I guess so here you can see it's beautiful I love the colours I want to be slightly more saturated I am happy that I desaturate the yellow tones though because they would have been very yellow I love this spine look it's beautiful it's so swirly the artist does such a wonderful job of that look how exciting this is I don't have Paper Forest to hand right now, the original version, but this spine's so exciting. Like if I saw this in a bookshop, on a bookshelf, I would probably take a look. I also love the little one for the first book because it shows that I've committed to writing the trilogy now. We're gonna take the skin off just for a second so I can look at the insides about it flapping about. But let's shoot this. I love her. So we had this really pattern from the cover as our new, like, our new background. I think, hmm. On here, I can't tell if it's just because it's the cream pages rather than white pages this time that are a little faded, but I think I'm I'm okay with that. I sound like I'm trying to convince myself. I think I'm okay with that. I think the font size for my name and the same for the cover as well is a little big. It's taking up a lot of that bottom space and I don't want it to. Also, you can see how blinded the white is. So, yeah, the original version of the book had white pages. This one's gone, I've gone for cream this time which even time still debating but I think yeah that's nicer because it's less blinding to look at I think out of things that I'm looking at the trim size isn't going to be perfect because again the Lulu template and the Ingram Spark template are different but I'm happy I learned most of this from um doing Emma's book March and Feather so like logically I knew I was going to do good this time around but it's just nice to know in person so yeah satisfied with this I think the next thing, there's no to change to the interior that I need to do other than the proofreading and the cover. I think I talked about the cover enough in detail already, so hopefully the next thing you see is a final copy. I have my final proof copies. I wish I hadn't unboxed them because then I could do a whole unboxing video, but they came in two separate packages instead of one together, so I just opened it without thinking. So we're going to show you what's going on here. Here is the paperback My Baby. So it's pretty much exactly the same as all the other versions I've showed. I don't remember if I said about changing the colour to yellow, 
but also at the top we have a quote from the Book Life Prize because that makes it, it looks very professional ties it together I love how the spines look on this it's again it's not perfectly central I mean I think the name is but the title isn't but I will fix those little adjustments and the back we have the woman for the paper forest and then we have the little description thing we have my company logo then we have the credits of my ebook edition also available cover art by cover design by and I think having this little coloured box around the barcode is just like my branding thing now because I think it looks cute and fun and just you know it keeps incorporating the yellow that's going around but this is here you can see you can see this lovely interior let's find the start of the chapter this one here very fun very fun very cute and then in the end for the inside the flaps I ended up making a cyanotype which has the pattern of just some leaves I found in my garden that are all referenced in the book because I wanted to be personal in that way and I got a video on like my photo channel my other channel that I will link below of like the cyanotype making process it was fun but it's blue to match which is part of the way I've drawn the cyanotypes and just I use them a lot in photography because I spent so many years doing photography in school where we just made them out of leaves because that's what we had available and there's one on the back that also has my author bio and my author photo so I love having all photos in colour which is the same I did on Emma's book which is here I will show you again where it's like I love having colour on the inside and then especially because her author photo the yellow matches the yellow on the cover so I thought yeah let's tie that all in together and originally this was just going to be a hardcover and ebook special edition release but I thought you know I want I want all the options so I think I make the same amount of profits no matter what version you buy so in this way I can have this is a more affordable option than the hardcover and then the ebook's more affordable than this and probably slightly more accessible so either it doesn't affect me what version you buy so I'd like to provide the options for everyone and then the hardcover ignore what's going on at the top here I've been practicing my sprayed edges technique and I've only just started this one and not the other edges and then just thought oh I have to film this video but again we have the cover you can see here it's not yeah it's not aligned it's a bit it's a bit too far this way like the gaps here they're not central the title almost looks central for a second but it's not but this again has the same book life prize quote i think the only other fun thing to mention is that the book life prize is in like the small caps font rather than something else which is fun the spine again still obsessed with the patterns on the spine and the back just says welcome to the paper for us because originally i thought you know i will just have a full list of quotes but then i didn't get a full list of quotes because i've been slacking recently honestly uni's been a much um uni's been much and again yellow barcode box we come to the inside the inner flap has description the back flap has my author bio and then beneath the jacket we have again the cyanotype of <laughs> this cyanotype of Sanotype, Sanotype on the back, which is just like a minimalist version of the cover in case you don't want my lovely boys on it. But this one, I'm thinking of taking the text off the tie, or at least off the cover and keeping the spine text. I haven't decided how I feel about it quite yet, but we have time to work it out. But yep, in summary, here are the special editions of My Beloved Son. For reference, here is, here is one of the old editions. They are, they're the same size. But I think this cover is a fun fancy cover, but again, I want I love this art so much. I'm obsessed with this artist. I I need her in my life. So I hope you enjoy coming along this journey with me because I really do love making books and showing people how I do it and like affordable ways for authors of all budgets to do it. Yeah, these are out August 17th. They're available for pre-order now. There'll be a link in the description with all the different places you can pre-order all the formats from. And there's also a link that if you want pre-order goodies you can fill out some information there and get a little treat but for now thank you for coming back to my forest one more time i'll see you next time bye